La Grande Adelesque is an Orientalist artwork. The artist is Jean-Auguste Dominique Ungro. I probably mispronounced his name, but whatever. The artwork that I have chosen is La Grande Adelesque. It was done in 1814, oil on canvas, and can be seen in Louvre, Paris. This is an example of representational art. I'll just describe the artwork for now. The piece features a woman with light skin in a reclining pose. The woman is lying down in what appears to be a bed or maybe a couch. She is nude and showing her back to the viewer. There is some cloth hiding her butt partially. Uh, and an important thing to note is that she is wearing a turban of some kind. Her neck is twisted to the right so she looks like she is looking directly at the viewer. She is also using a fan that covers part of her leg. She has her left leg or her right leg uh, in that position. I feel like this is in really comfortable position now that I'm thinking about it. To the left side, there are blue pillows, golden colored sheets, and white colored sheets are on her. I'm not exactly too sure on what colors these might be. Uh, there is also some type of jewelry by the sheets with various gems. To be honest, I don't know whether these are gems or pearls. I don't really know what it is in general, uh, but these objects are towards the lower left of the painting. Looking at the right side of the painting now, she seems to have a gold bracelet on her right arm. She is also holding a fan that is made up of peacock feathers. And to the right of her feet, there is a hookah and a small table of some sort. In the background, there is also a drape with a neat pattern throughout the object. When in the back is nothing much, just some shadows and a boring tan wall. Now on to the formal analysis, the emphasis or the focal point in this painting would be the woman. Complementary colors near the bottom left of the painting. I would say that this painting has a balance in terms of warm colors and cool colors. Warm colors where the body is and cool colors on the right side of the painting, looking at the drapes. Positive space where the woman is and negative space in the shadowy area. This is also an asymmetrical painting where there is more of her on the left side of the painting. More skin is showing in the left side of the painting. You can also see that there is more of the drape on the right side. You can see some of the visual textures all around the painting. The drapes, for example, look like they have a silky touch. You can see some repetition or pattern in them as well. The peacock feathered fan looks like it has a very feathery feeling. Uh, her skin appears soft and so does the sheets and pillows. You can see some of the implied lines from her eyes and body. Her eyes, for example, looking towards us. And you can see some of the lines following her back or her spine. Some other implied lines could be where the fan is going towards the bottom right. And then also the drapes curving towards the bottom right. We also see some geometric lines all the way on the right by the hookah, hookah or the small table. One thing that I wanted to note is the proportion of the woman. Some others have also seen this where she seems to be a bit disproportionate. She seems to have a longer spine than what is usually normal. Also her pose appears to be impossible. To me, this doesn't really look like a comfortable pose, especially with her leg position. In terms of iconography, we have discussed in class how the flowers represent fertility and how the pupper represents loyalty. What do the objects show in La Grande Olesque? In this painting, there are four objects to me that show exoticism. Those three, or four objects, are the jewelry, turban, fan, and hookah. The reason being is that one doesn't see many fans made up of peacock feathers. Also, in different cultures, the peacock can represent a variety of things like love or knowledge. The hookah represents the Orient because these objects originate from India or the East. These items also go into another approach which deals with Orientalism, which is the main focus. 
Edward Said created Orientalism. Orientalism is about the Western views of the East, the East being places like the Middle East, Asia, or the northern parts of Africa. Some characteristics of Orientalism is its distortion of reality. Orientalist paintings usually have some, some type of stereotype, and some of these paintings depict the people as lazy or uncivilized. In this context, we'll be thinking about this artwork as Westerners in France during the 1800s. Western painters like Angro tried to capture what the East was without ever visiting it. In a way, the artist creates a divide, showing different cultures of the East without really understanding it. The West was conquering and colonizing parts of the East during this time. France was colonizing during the 1800s and these types of artworks allow these areas to be stereotyped. This can be argued that it can make them easier to conquer. The reason for this is because of othering. This means that because the East was different, Westerners saw them as the other and perhaps not as important. Some other context during this time was friends would be the conquering power during the early 19th century. This was because of Napoleon's power during this time. Something that should be noted is that the artwork was commissioned by Napoleon's sister. The main relation with the artwork is the exotic women and items that are within the painting. We see the headdress or turban, a peacock feathered fan, a hookah by the right side. To me, this is an artwork showing a woman from the Orient. Again, keep in mind that Angro has never visited the East. A different approach to look at this painting is with gender studies. Here we see that the gender norm of women during the 1800s is being challenged. In this artwork, the female is being showed nude and relaxed. She has a relaxed face and doesn't seem too worried about being nude. She seems to be more comfortable being nude and isn't really covering purposefully to me. This is challenging the norm because she is not a goddess. Usually women who are nude are goddesses at the time. These paintings were mainly for middle class men, or in this case, it would be for Napoleon's sister, who was a queen. People were interested in paintings of the Orient. I don't think that it goes into the male gaze because the commissioner was a female. Regardless, there are more paintings like this where the depiction of women is similar. In all, La Grande Odalisque is a part of many Orientalist artworks. It depicts a woman from the Orient. The artist follows the stereotypes where he depicts people from the Orient as deviants or lazy. This is an artwork that is part of his many Orientalist pieces. Here is my challenge question. Do you think this painting has Orientalist characteristics? Here is my work that was inspired by La Grande Odalesque. I wanted to make a similar image, but with my Star Wars spin to it. At first, I started it as a joke, but I continued with the painting after a while. Here's some similarities that you can see with both paintings. The reason why I did this is mainly because I'm a huge Star Wars fan. The context here is that she is in one of the Star Destroyer ships, relaxing and looking at the viewing area. Beds in the Star Destroyers aren't really comfy here, as they are kind of stiff and ugly looking. I made the woman into an Imperial Stormtrooper and added some Empire imagery in the background. I also kept the Autolesque pose and kept the drapes in this scene. The exotic items were replaced with Empire imagery, and the woman wearing Imperial armor shows that she is part of the Empire. Uh, to the right side is the Imperial logo or symbol on some drapes that I tried to draw to my best ability. I don't think I did a really good job, but that's okay. I did change the background, however. Uh, the background is more interesting in my opinion as opposed to the boring tin wall. In the back we see a viewing area of the Death Star. At first the Imperial was supposed to be in the Death Star looking out in space, but I changed it so that they were in a ship looking at the Death Star. Mostly because I kind of suck at drawing Star Destroyers.